even start one of these things. So, you want to know how to deal with min-maxes in D&D? Well, let's start with something I consider as a very obvious disclaimer. There's absolutely nothing wrong with somebody playing D&D to min-max or power game. If that's how they derive joy from D&D, they have every right to do so. And if you're choosing to punish someone because they just engage more deeply with the game mechanics, then I feel like that says a lot more about you as a dungeon master than them as a player. Of course, if the players in question are arguing about the rules, bullying other players, or trying to metagame, that's another story entirely. But from my experience, players who just enjoy optimizing builds allows for the creation of some of the most memorable, unique, and enjoyable experiences in D&D. 99% of the time, any issues in your D&D playgroup can be resolved with a conversation. If it's affecting you or the wider playing group and you want to fix the problem, a conversation is the perfect starting point. If power gaming doesn't make sense in the RP heavy campaign you're trying to run, make that clear from the outset. If the wider group feels that a player's min-max combat build is dampening their experience, have a conversation with that player and maybe challenge them to create a build that isn't combat orientated. Perhaps instead of a combat build, they go down the route of playing a much more charismatic, diplomatic character that has a way with words or deception. A lot of the time, the question shouldn't be, how do I deal with this player? It should be, how do I challenge them? How does a 28 not hit? I don't know what to tell you. Definitely fudging the AC, just upset that I'm playing a Twilight Cleric. Fizzleflop, it's your turn. Well, we know I had disadvantage in existing, so this should go great. That's a one. Great. That hits. How is that possible? <laughs> Does this monster have reverse AC? I'm losing my mind! So, how do we actually challenge them? The easy answer is bearing your encounters. But what does that actually mean? It'll be very dependent on what the actual min-max is that you're trying to deal with, but 90% of the time, the problem probably lies somewhere in the realm of your players are decimating absolutely everything you're throwing at them, which you as the dungeon master will need to unpack just a little bit. If they've got a build that's really good at dealing mass damage to single targets, throw multiple enemies at them. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the most effective. For the longest time in my early days of DMing, I was getting increasingly frustrated that I couldn't deal any form of damage to our party's barbarian. And then I realized in retrospect that I was just including a lot of enemies that dealt slashing and bludgeoning damage, so he was just taking half damage every encounter. This doesn't mean that I replaced all of these weapon-wielding creatures with spellcasters, but it does mean I slowly started introducing more and more spellcasters to keep that player engaged and challenged. If your player is a spellcaster and damage to single or multiple targets is guaranteed, introduce objectives into combat that aren't just defeat every creature. Perhaps there's an item they need to interact with, puzzles they need to solve, or lair actions that they also need to navigate. It sounds stupidly simple, but I'll reiterate this again and again it doesn't need to be that complicated. The best part about puzzles is you can't min-max PC intelligence. Sure, maybe one of your players have created 32,000 copies of themselves because they've exploited a Wish Simulacrum combo, which don't let them do, but if the person controlling all of those copies can't solve a simple logic puzzle that they need to to proceed, well, bad luck. So which doorway is the right one to go through? Is there a spell I should cast or something? There's no right or wrong way. It's a moral puzzle. Whichever one you feel more morally aligns with your character is the one I'd recommend you pick. Do I use my constitution modifier for my morality? No, it's your morality. What do you, as a tiefling coffee lock, feel the right door to go through is based on the information you have? I think I'd pick whichever one is the best option. I feel like I've finally found your kryptonite. In all my experiences, puzzles have been the bane and highlight of all of my D&D parties and have created some of the most memorable moments that have ever happened. If puzzles aren't your cup of tea, you could always pull an Uno reverse card and implement a min-max character yourself to throw at your party. I mean, we as dungeon masters are the gold standard of yoinking and twisting things that we've already seen before to throw at our players, so let's just steal their ideas. Also, giving your players a taste of their own medicine every once in a while is a healthy thing. Not in a cruel or unfair sense, but it's always important to make it clear to your players that anything they can do 
we as the DM can do as well. I mean, that's kind of the best part of our gig. Well, that and just throwing completely wild scenarios at your players that they can't possibly have been prepared for. You awake in a darkened hallway with cobblestone walls that continue for a few feet before disappearing into complete darkness. I think you're forgetting one thing. Dark vision. No, your dark vision doesn't appear to be working. What? Um, okay, I'll cast Produce Flame. You try to and nothing happens. Anti-magic field? I'll feel around my pockets and backpack for anything of use that can produce some form of light. You immediately feel a long two-handed sword strapped to your back, but nothing else of note on your person. What? I have no use for a two-handed sword. I'm a wizard, but are you? <laughs> Whose body am I in? <laughs> it's not permanent. I mean, it's a game of fantasy make-believe. Who knows what can happen? All of that being said, every player deserves their hero moment, including your power gamers. Just because one or multiple players have builds that may be a little bit overpowered in the grand scheme of things, it's also important to create situations where their builds can shine. Because everyone wants to feel like the big badass every once in a while. It's all about balance, and I cannot stress this enough, communication. If you're asking yourself how to deal with these players, it's also important to ask the question what the actual problem is that they're causing. If it's making your life harder, flag that with them. If it's impacting you and other players' enjoyment, have a conversation with them. If it doesn't fit your DMing style or the general vibe of the campaign and group, it might be time for a more difficult conversation on whether or not they suit the playgroup. The D&D experience is meant to be fun and enjoyable for everyone, but it's also important to note that power gaming and min-maxing is fun for certain players. Want to know a surefire way to put your min-max players in their place? There are poorly segued ad transition at them. Do you like D&D? You do realize that we're the same person, right? Well, do you like Studio Ghibli? You know we do. Well, would you like the ability to fly an airship, trade illegal goods, gamble away your hard-earned gold? Hell, even talk with spirits? Fine, I'll play your little game. Yes, yes I would. Then come and visit the Wandering Tavern, you dickhead. The Wandering Tavern is a 180-page traveler's guide to an expansive Studio Ghibli-inspired floating TTRPG setting. And the Kickstarter's only got a few days left to go. Crammed into the book, you'll find 15 giant battle maps with 23 unique key locations, 33 plug-and-play NPCs, 18 new magical items, airships with D&D stat blocks, 30 unique plot hooks, illegal trading, you little criminal, 13 setting-themed cooking recipes, unique spirit mechanics, multiple downtime games that include gambling, say bye-bye to your gold, if you want to support an incredibly genuine and passionate father-son TTRPG creation team, please click the link in my bio and support the Kickstarter. If you have any of your own fun ways of dealing with powerful characters, let me know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video and like to see more long-form videos, please let me know. I've got plenty in the works and I can't wait for you to see them. See you soon.